104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. Joining us right now, host from 95.7, the game in the Bay Area, Schenectady's own Damon Bruce. First of all, Schenectady says hello, sir. Oh, I say hello to Schenectady. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Grandma, if you're listening. Uh, uh, and, yeah, a lot of friends and family back there still. I, I got a lot of love for Schenectady in my heart. There's a, there's a lot of uh, Patriots fans in Schenectady who are still surprised that Jimmy Garoppolo is now a 49er. What, what do you think of this? I was stunned when the deal happened because, look, growing up, the NFL trade deadline was useless. Like, the NHL trade deadline created more news. So it, it never really turned out to be a, a, a big name or a big story, and this time around it certainly did. Let me see a Jai get traded, too. So it seems like teams are getting more aggressive here at the trade deadline. Welcome to the modern NFL, I guess. Uh, look, I, I don't think Garoppolo is the next harbinger of great quarterback. Just because you trained under, uh, you know, under, under Brady doesn't mean that you're about to be the man. There are tons of examples of, of the heralded backup who, when got his starting job, fell flat on his face and if you don't mind, one guy who used to play for Tom Brady who fell on his sla- who fell flat on his face out here, Brian Hoyer, <laughs> who is now back with the Patriots. Brian Hoyer was a Brady clipboard holder, so now it's Garoppolo. And look, I mean, anything better than this, right? Like another option is always the good option to take when all your current options are just awful. And when you look at the fact they got Garoppolo for a second round pick, which could be a very high second round pick, I originally didn't like the deal because. I think you've got to rebuild through the draft, and this has got to be a five, six-year plan. Don't start 0-8 and and panic. And that's what I thought the Niners kind of did. But the truth is, the value that they got, when you look at what has been flipped for quarterbacks in the draft who've never thrown an NFL pass, which Jimmy has, uh, you know, a second-round pick for a seasoned, not seasoned, but at least been there, done that quarterback, isn't a bad deal. You look at what you know, the, the, the Redskins gave up for RG3, what the Eagles gave up for Wentz, what the Rams gave up just to draft golf. I mean, it's crazy. It's a, it's a pirate's ransom. So a second-round pick for a shot at what everyone says is a good guy, team guy, and is just waiting for his time, sure. Go ahead, take the flyer. Hope it works. All right, so you're not nearly as pumped up as I am, Damian, because I looked at it and I thought Shanahan's a great quarterback guy. Garoppolo's, you know, been studying and, and, and all intents and purposes could be a great quarterback. I thought these two were a match made in heaven. Oh, I, look, it could all work out really well. Before I talk about heaven, i got to see this guy win a freaking game. <laughs> like, I'm excited about Kyle Shanahan, but what am I going to talk about what magic plays he's got in his pocket? This guy is 0-8 to start his career, and if it weren't for the Giants coming into town this weekend – like, 0-16 looks like a reality. I think this is a game the 49ers could win. There's a Texans game that they could win. But I'm calling this Sunday a must-lose. I mean, if you really think about it, this is all about building for the future. And the 49ers need one of the top two picks. The Cleveland Browns are going to be the Cleveland Browns. They operate in their own vacuum, and you give no say over what they do. So you're really competing against the Colts and the Giants for a – that, you know, to be the other Cleveland Browns in the NFL right now. Well, you've already lost to the Colts, so they've got that. The, the Niners had that losing tiebreaker, and then if they would just lose to the Giants this weekend, like they could pick up a garbage win or two along the way, and it wouldn't hurt their draft pick. I'm calling this a must-lose. I don't want to see Garoppolo, C.J. Beathard, who took a beating last, just last week and then the week before against the Eagles. This guy's tough as nails, and he's deserved the right to be this next year's backup quarterback. But if, if Garoppolo's so good, there's no way I think you risk him behind an offensive line right now that is so bad. And that's for the entire season you're talking, not just against the Giants. You're talking sit Garoppolo until 2018? Or until Joe Staley's back and your offensive line is in a sieve and has had a bye week and maybe a little time to lick its wounds and practice a little bit more together. But that is an offensive line that's going to get somebody hurt. So there's no way you want to risk the guy that you just dubbed your future. And look, I think Garoppolo is a nice player from the limited bit I've seen. What if I told you that C.J. Beathard has more starts in the NFL than Jimmy Garoppolo, though? I mean, doesn't that change right. how immediately excited anyone should be about this guy? <laughs> he, could be Matt, he could be Matt Castle. 
He could be Charlie Whitehurst. He could be Tom Savage. He could be Brock Osweiler. He could be the, the list of guys who you think are going to be awesome, but then just aren't. That's a long list. 95-7 the game uh, in the Bay Area. Damon Bruce here with us right now. Uh, Damon, how's, how has it been for the Raiders right now? Uh, there was there was hate throughout the land, but it seems like they're getting good support. Yeah, the Raiders, you know, they, they're going into a bye week off a win down in Miami, and I guess that's a good thing. They basically they got to go 7-1 and one in the second half, and they got to start that march in Mexico City against the Patriots two weekends from now. Um, I'm looking at a team that's still got its playoff math alive, but based on the eye test, just the way they're playing, that ain't a playoff team. That's not a team of consequence. Uh, the offense has regressed greatly under first-year offensive coordinator Todd Downing. The defense was not great shakes to begin with, and I don't think they took the appropriate moves in the off season to bolster the defense. And they just seem to be a talented team, that for whatever reason is stuck in the mud. And I can't explain why. That There was a point, like about week five this year, where the 49ers with Brian Hoyer had more passing yards than the Raiders did with Derek Carr. It was Brian Hoyer and nobody. It's Derek Carr, it's Amari Cooper, it's Michael Crabtree and Jared Cook. You got Marshawn Lynch. Do something. And they didn't do much. I, I don't know what to explain it. They, Derek Carr has turned into check down Charlie. And, you know, I like Jack Del Rio, the guy, very much. But Jack Del Rio, the coach, might be a position that needs to be upgraded for this team to take the next step. And, oh, by the way, Jack just signed a four-year extension at the end of last season. Great move, Mark Davis. <laughs> How much of that blame does go on the running game in Marshawn Lynch? They thought when they brought in Marshawn out of retirement he was going to be an upgrade, but now he's grabbing officials, sitting in the crowd, eating hot dogs, doing whatever Marshawn wants to do. His biggest impact came in that game in Miami. He danced to get against the Jets. He got ejected against the Chiefs for protecting someone on the other team. I mean, look, Marshawn is like Oakland's chosen son. And I look at Oakland sometimes and I say to myself, you should have raised better kids. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, Marshawn is, you know, he's great in a Skittles commercial. I really don't know how good of a teammate he is. I don't really know how much he's got left. He seems to be still a very hard runner, but he doesn't have any elusive speed anymore. Uh, maybe he needed a little rest that he got with the suspension for one game. I don't know, but you know, the, the Marshawn Lynch is here for the victory lap that's supposed to be the Raiders season is hardly the storyline that we're telling. Yeah, it's it's pretty rough being a Raiders fan between the owner having a Floby haircut and Marshawn Lynch fighting for the other team. It's It's been difficult, Damon. Well, and look, I mean, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Like, all you guys are moving to Vegas as slowly as humanly possible. <laughs> so if I'm supposed to be emotionally invested in everything, you know, I don't know how any Raider fan can just say to themselves, well, I think it's really cool if my team's going to leave my city again. You know, I, there's a lot of provincial pride on the West Coast just like there is on the East Coast. And everybody from Oakland's all about Oakland. The nickel dime, you know, it's 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 all about Oaktown business. But when it comes to the Raiders, there's a percentage of the fans that will literally go out of their way to explain horrific ownership decisions because they think that Davis family loyalty is the ultimate badge of the Raider fan. It's ridiculous. Well, out there in the Bay Area, they do have something to root for that's had a lot of success. That's the Golden State Warriors. Got to ask you this question: Have you referred to him? As Nick Young or Swaggy P? What are you calling him? I now? only call I, I only call him Nick Young in public spaces, but you know, there's times in the press box I lean over to a couple guys I know and I'm like, man, Swaggy P is just letting it rip tonight. <laughs> 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 I, 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 he is kind of what I thought he was going to be. He's a great three point shooter. He does not like to play a lot of defense. You can hide him on the Golden State Warriors, and he's actually playing with more effort on the defensive side of the court than I think anyone's ever seen in his career. And that's just the culture of the Warriors. These guys rub off on you. And it's such a defense-driven team that you can't be the one guy out there who's just like, you know, I only shoot, dog. I'm not, your, you know, I'm not here to play defense. You can't get away with that and crack this rotation. So much like JaVale McGee, who a few years ago was cast as this NBA odd miscreant, he comes to the Warriors, and he finds, 
you know, the right way to play, and he has a fine year, and he settles in, wears beige and blends, and he turns out to be a very nice piece, and that's the same thing that's going to happen with Nick Young. He is going to be this year's JaVale McGee in terms of the image rehabilitation process. That's going to happen out here, and I'm just going to tell you guys, this team is so ridiculously deep. There are so many options and levers for Steve Kerr to pull. Uh, It's an experiment I don't want run. But how many injuries would the Warriors need in their starting five for us to really say, like, all right, they're not contenders anymore? Like, I think wow. three of the starting five could get hurt, and the bench is so good that they would still be a four seed in the West. Wow. That's how good they are. But Damon, Mello's in OKC now. Don't do that to yeah. Mello. Don't you do that to Mello, Levesque. We've been arguing about the Mello thing with the Knicks and Mello thing all fall along. I've always said Carmelo Anthony is an underappreciated scorer that you have to see in person to understand the smoothness and the size at which he plays. Having said all that, Chris Stapp's Porzingis is like, get out of town, you isolation bum. Everything that is wrong with basketball is embodied in your selfishness. You ruined the Knicks for how long? Now it looks like you're going to go ruin the Thunder. Way to go, Carmelo. I think he took both of our sides. You know, that's good it. enough. I like it too. 95 7 the games. <laughs> Damon Bruce just ruined Gaz's life. No, it was he ruined awesome. yours too. I heard it. All right. Damon's the best. Damon, we, we appreciate love you, brother. It, we appreciate you making time. I'm sorry. When you watch the Warriors play team basketball for like the better part of four years, better than it's ever been played in your life, and then you look at Carmelo Anthony no, for like Damon. three possessions, you just go. What the hell is this? Like, was Bayheim this guy's coach? What the hell? What is this guy oh, yeah. doing? Yeah, what blacktop park Stop. am I in right the now? Is Why over. Is Stop happening? it. Goodbye to you two. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Seriously, you enjoy your Carmelo End One mixtape tour. We're going to go polish the Larry O'Brien trophy. <laughs> Take care, guys. Good to talk to you, Tom and Jeff.